Hello fellow treasure hunters, welcome back. The quest for the treasure on the island of Oak seems to never lose speed. The hunt has been continuous for over 300 years with virtually nothing to show for it. Well, that may not be true on a personal level however, the Oak Island mystery has taught me a tremendous amount, regarding its true history, the secrets of man, and especially myself. I believe I solved the Oak Island treasure hunt, I believe that nothing was buried on Oak Island apart from a trap, the stone cipher and the endless clues left by Templars that lead you off of the island. It is my personal opinion, that the physical idea of an object, such as the Holy Grail's legend, along with the power of the Ark of the Covenant, to be nothing more than a trap for the greed found within a man's heart. An endless quest across the globe, chasing an endless idea of power over destiny. A quest in the form of a phoenix, with each location birthing yet another illusionary enticement. I suspect the Templars' motives were to set out to continuously punish the greedy, especially those who are tempted to loot their treasures throughout history. It is my suspicion, and I put it to you, that the Templars never died out, their treasures have remained within their protection ever since the discovery of their first phantom clue, and have reveled in man's failure at seeing the strings being pulled. If you have followed to this point however, you will know that my convictions lay elsewhere to greed or collusion, it lay within the wanting to unravel the puzzle not an eye to pillage, if such artifacts exist, I perish the thought of the responsibility of their possession. On that note we pick up the trail where we left off. On October the 25th, the Vatican did something rather surprising, as if they sensed the rat has been well and truly smelt. They released a document, a parchment that has remained in the suppressed, secretive, and bulging bowels of the Vatican archives for over 700 years. It is the report of the official church investigation into the activities of the Knights Templar throughout the early years of the 14th century. As I have already covered, which some surprisingly reputed, October 1306, these Crusader Knights were found guilty of idolatry, blasphemy, and heresy, and the Knights Order was dissolved. Some like Jacques de Molay were burned at the stake, others imprisoned, and most were stripped of their assets. Astonishingly, and most importantly however, this parchment gives credence to the existence of the Templar's treasures, something that appears to have been important enough for a Pope to commit public mass murder throughout France. This extraordinary document reveals how the Vatican inquiry found no evidence of wrongdoing. It was the Pope himself, Clement V, who directly intervened and declared the Templars heretics. The report appears to show that the pontiff was after their wealth, said to include priceless treasures once housed in the Temple of Jerusalem, and consequently lost when the city was ransacked in ancient times. This document then reveals the stories I have conveyed thus far, regarding the discoveries the knights made at the Temple Mount are corroborated by the Pope of the Catholic Church. Which bodies within this sequence of historical events were found to be the heretics remains to be seen. But despite the arrest and torture of leading Templars, and the wholesale seizure of their lands, nothing of this fabled hoard was ever officially found. Most historians doubt the existence of the Templar treasure. My research has led me from beyond the shores of Oak Island, they revealed to me an intelligence within the Templar sect, an intelligence of nobility of the highest degree, they have developed an intricate web of possible pathways of discovery, that can unlock in a person the knowledge of what they truly hold dear in life, by revealing what they pursue, and what they are willing to give up for these things. We have come to the point where research becomes, maybe one of the most amazing real life treasure hunt stories ever. The trail was picked up by Jody and Graham Russell, compiled by Graham Phillips, published within his book, The Templars and the Ark of the Covenant. In the heart of England, close to Stratford-upon-Avon, famous as the birthplace of William Shakespeare, is the village of Temple Herdwick, named after the Templars who once resided there. After the Third Crusade in the late 12th century, these Templars returned from the Holy Land to build a chapel to house certain holy relics they claimed to have found. Many Crusaders came home with items purportedly associated with early Judaism and Christianity, and with characters and events in the Bible, but the Temple Herdwick Knights are said to have discovered the most famous biblical artifact of all, the Ark of the Covenant. At least, according to local legend. They certainly claimed to have found what appear to have been considered hallowed relics at the time. Contemporary records of land and property holdings reveal that in 1192 the chapel housed quote, object sacres, translated as sacred objects, which the Templars had acquired in the Holy Land, including what was described as a large golden chest. This is exactly what the Ark of the Covenant was said to be. 
According to the Old Testament, it was a large golden box, made to contain the tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments, lost when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem in 587 BC. Although the Templars were rounded up in 1306, some evaded capture. 600 years later, a British historian suggested that they managed to survive in secret at Temple Herdwick until 1350, when they were wiped out by the Black Death. Jacob Cove Jones, who lived in the area, not only believed they possessed the lost ark, he also claimed to have discovered its secret hiding place. Having fallen out with fellow scholars for ridiculing his work, Cove Jones refused to reveal his findings. He intended to carry out an excavation of his own, but sadly it never transpired. In 1906 he contracted tuberculosis and decided to take his secret to the grave. Well, almost. Knowing he had only a short time to live, the eccentric historian left behind a bizarre epitaph. He designed a stained glass window that he commissioned to be made and installed in a new church that was being built close to his home in the village of Langley. Astonishingly, on his deathbed he announced that the window contained a series of clues to lead to where he was sure the ark was hidden. Most dismissed him as a crank, while others who attempted to crack the code gave up without success. Completed in 1906, the year Cove Jones has died, Langley Chapel is one of the smallest churches in England, and the window in question is set into a side wall. Called the Epiphany Window, it depicts the three wise men visiting the baby Jesus on Epiphany, the twelfth night of Christmas between January the 5th and 6th. Matthew's Gospel relates how three mystics from the East followed a miraculous star that led them to Bethlehem where Christ was born. According to Christian tradition, the wise men ultimately found Jesus when a rooster uncharacteristically crowed at midnight on top of the building where the child slept. The window scene shows the wise men holding their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, praising the baby held in his mother's arms, while above them is the crowing rooster and the wondrous star. Strangely, the stained glass window did not depict the ark. The wise men were said to have found the baby Jesus by following a star. Might a star be Jacob Cove Jones's vital clue? Was the seeker being told to follow a star? The Ark of the Covenant is indeed associated with stars, two of them, to be precise. The Bible describes the Ark as having figurines of two angels on its lid. They were said to depict the Archangels Michael and Gabriel that, according to Hebrew tradition, were represented in the sky by the stars Bennett Nash and Mizar, the tail stars of what we now call the Big Dipper. If Jacob Cove Jones had used these stars to indicate a hiding place, Graham and the Russells would need to know where and when they should be observed. The positions of the stars change all the time, not only in relation to the rotation of the Earth, but also throughout the course of the year as the Earth orbits the Sun. If the treasure was hidden somewhere that was, for instance, indicted by the stars directly above it, they would need to know the precise time and day of the year to observe them. Furthermore, they would need to know where to observe the stars from, as they would appear to be over different locations depending on the viewing point. Graham and the Russells eventually came up with a solution. At the top of the Epiphany window there was the star which guided the wise men to Bethlehem. In fact, it appeared to be two stars, one overlaid on the other. And right next to it there was a phoenix rising from flames, the very same creature after which the Burt and Dasset Hills had originally been named. Could the location from which to observe these stars be the top of the Phoenix Hills? In fact, on top of these hills there stood the Phoenix Beacon, erected by the Templars themselves, which bore a striking resemblance to the central image in the stained glass window, the odd-shaped casket held by one of the wise men. It looked very much like the round tower, with its peculiar, conical roof and castellated walls. The casket even had a bird upon it that seemed to be another representation of the phoenix rising from the first specific day, they decided, was revealed by the event port raid in the window, Epiphany, on the twelfth night of Christmas. And the precise time was revealed by the rooster next to the star. They were certain that Colt Jones intended his seeker to observe the stars at 12 p.m. on Epiphany night, from the position of the tower. At that exact time, the two stars are low in the sky and, when viewed from the Phoenix Beacon, are pointing almost directly downwards to the foot of a hill on the horizon, specifically to a little village called Chapel Green. Chapel Green is named after a medieval chapel that once stood there, but all that remains today is a Victorian drinking fountain standing beside the road. Dating from Cove Jones's time, it is a red brick, rectangular structure, inlaid with an arched niche. It closely resembles a red brick arch depicted in the window scene, right below the star design. 
convinced that, that this was exactly where the clues in the Epiphany window were intended to lead, they organized a geophysics survey of the area, but although we discovered evidence of the original chapel, nothing made of gold or resembling the Ark appeared to be there. Tragically, in 1949 the lane was widened and the ruins of the centuries-old chapel were destroyed. Perhaps the workmen involved had dug up whatever was there to be found. If it was the lost Ark, they kept it quiet. If Jacob Cove Jones was to be believed, the place they were seeking was the hiding place of the Templars' relics. As these items were considered holy, then the likelihood was they would have been hidden on hallowed ground. Chapel Green was named after a medieval chapel that once stood there but all that remains of it now is a holy well that stands beside a road at the foot of the hill. In fact, in the 1800s the original shrine that marked the spot was replaced by a drinking fountain that would have been there in Cove Jones' time. This, they decided, was the best bet when they arrived at the spot they discovered the drinking fountain all overgrown in the hedges of a roadside verge. When they saw it, they were convinced that they had cracked Jacob Cove Jones' coat. It was a rectangular structure, about three feet high, four feet wide, and a foot thick, with a rounded arch niche in which a tap for the spring water had obviously once been set. Built from red brick, it reminded them of red brick arch in the Epiphany window. The star, or perhaps two stars, in the widow design was directly over a rounded brick arch that was remarkably similar to what they had found. The area around the water fountain was later surveyed by archaeologists using geophysics equipment to detect what was under the ground. Unfortunately, nothing of interest was found. However, it was ultimately discovered that in the 1940s the entire area around the fountain was dug up to widen the lane and to build a number of houses along the new road. The records showed that the excavated rubble had been used to divert a stream in a nearby wood and this area too was investigated by the geophysics team. Although there was no evidence of any gold objects like the Ark of the Covenant, one thing was found that must have originally come from the ground excavated beside the water fountain. In the banks of the stream, a flat stone slab was discovered which was about an inch thick, a foot and a half long, and a foot wide. Made of sandstone, it was inscribed with what appeared to be 13 separate symbols, cut into the stone to a depth of about a quarter of an inch. The slab had clearly been broken off from a longer piece as the one end was irregular and jagged. The other end, however, was smoother and had been deliberately rounded at the corners. If the Templars' treasures had been hidden in Chapel Green they had long since been removed, either by Jacob Cove Jones or someone else. The stone slab, however, may have been overlooked the slab was taken to the British Museum in London, which boasts England's best facilities for identifying ancient artifacts. However, as the stone was not made from organic matter it could not be carbon dated, and as it had been removed from its original location and used for landfill its age could not be determined by the usual archaeological methods. How long ago the slab was shaped and inscribed was also a mystery as the symbols carved into it could not be identified. They appeared to match no form of ancient or modern writing. In fact, they could not be matched with any known alphabet or symbol system on the museum's massive database. It is just possible that the tablet may have been the most important artifact of all. The sandstone from which it was cut was identified as a rennet sandstone, precisely the same sort of rock from which Chbelman Bar is formed. In the Templars and the Ark of the Covenant, Graham Phillips Jody and Graham Russell go in search of the lost Ark and the treasures once housed in the Temple of Solomon. Further clues discovered in the Epiphany window lead to other remarkable discoveries and an incredible adventure that must be one of the most astonishing real-life stories ever told. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.